Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Cooking for the Family. I'm Devon and today I'm going to share with you my tried and true recipe for pot roast in the crock pot. It comes out tender, delicious. I think your family will enjoy it as much as mine. The ingredients are simple. I'm going to share with you how I do it. You ready? Let's get started. So in my crock pot, I have my chuck roast and I'm using a four pound chuck roast. This recipe will work for any um, chuck roast that's uh, anywhere from about three pounds to four pounds. And so to that, I add a little bit of seasoning. I added my Lowry seasoning salt and we're not gonna put a lot of seasoning salt on it because the Lipton uh, beefy onion that we're gonna use has also a good amount of seasoning in there as well. And in the description box below, I'll have a list of all the ingredients you need to make this delicious recipe, as well as my other pot roast recipe that I also do. I will also have a link in the description box for that as well. So on each side, I put some Lowry seasoning salt and I also put some coarse black pepper. For each one, I put about a fourth of a teaspoon of the black pepper and about a half a teaspoon of the Lowry's. Now the beefy onion, this is a game changer y'all. Before I've always used the Lipton onion soup mix or sometimes I use the mushroom onion, but my sister turned me on to using the beefy onion and I absolutely love it. So if you can find the beefy onion in your local market, I highly recommend it. If not, you can definitely use the regular Lipton onion soup mix as a substitute. We're only gonna use one packet and we go in and we sprinkle it on and I just kinda try to spread it out a little bit on top of my chuck roast. Now, once I've done that, then we're going to go on and we're going to add a little bit of my rosemary blend that I like to use. Now, if you don't have any rosemary blend in particular, you can use just regular dried rosemary. And we're using about one teaspoon that I just like to sprinkle on top of the meat as well as all around the insides of my crock pot. Next, we're going to use one can of cream of mushroom condensed soup mix. I love this stuff. I like using it in different recipes because it's really versatile and it's really quick and easy to just be able to put a nice recipe and a nice meal together for the family with it. And so we're just going to be using one can of the um, cream of mushroom soup. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returner, welcome back. I want to thank all my wonderful subscribers for your likes, your shares, your subscribes, your good vibe comments. There are so many wonderful people out there and I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, become one of my wonderful subscribers as I share with you what I cook and bake for my family and my kitchen. So once I have the cream of mushroom soup mix, I kind of just rub it on top of the roast. And then what you're going to use the uh, entire can. And also what we're going to do is I just use about a half a can, not too much. You only want a half a can of water. And I just kind of get the rest of like the essence of the soup, um, the, the condensed soup mix out of the can. And so just you just need about a half a can, not too much. Do not fill up the full can because then you're going to end up with too much liquid. Then to our crock pot, I'm going to add two full bay leaves. And so I add the two bay leaves and then we're going to add two whole garlic cloves right to our crock pot, just like that. Next, we're going to put the top on our crock pot. I have my crock pot set to low and I'm going to put it on a 10 hour timer. Your meat, your um, chuck roast that we have is going to cook anywhere from eight hours to 10 hours when it's nice and tender. I'm gonna share with you a little tip about when to take out your, um, your pot roast and what you really wanna be looking for. So our pot roast has been in our crock pot cooking on low for six hours and 45 minutes now. It's looking good. You see how the liquid has formed in there. We only used a half of a can of water that we added. And that's pretty much all that you need because your roast is gonna give off a lot of its own liquid. So with our um, pot roast, I'm gonna be making some mashed potatoes to go with our dinner tonight. Now also, you can use uh, steamed rice if you like. This also works really great if you want to use some egg noodles as well. Kind of like whatever you want to use as a side to go with your pot roast. Something else is that when you're at that time uh, stamp of 6 hours and about 45 minutes, 
and you have a you know you have plenty of liquid in there that if you want to at this time you can go on and add your vegetables so if you wanted to add some um, Yukon gold potatoes that are cut up into you know nice thick pieces if you want to add some carrots some celery because our roast is gonna cook anywhere from that eight hours to ten hours or even you know a little bit more than the nine hours a good time to add those potatoes and add the carrots and add the celery would be around about that time so these are my potatoes. I'm gonna go on and put them on to boil. I also added some salt to the water and I added about um, a teaspoon and a half of salt to the water when I boil my potatoes. I also have some nice fresh baby carrots that I'm gonna chop up as well. I'm gonna be boiling the baby carrots and then I'm also gonna add some peas. And the potatoes that I'm using for my mashed potatoes are Yukon Gold potatoes. And I used about a pound and a half, almost two pounds of the potatoes that I put on my water to boil. Now right now, as I'm chopping my carrots, our pot roast has been cooking in our crock pot for over eight and a half hours. It's getting close to that nine hour mark and we're gonna check it to see how it's doing. I have my carrots ready. I'm gonna go on and put those on the stove. And now this is our pot roast. We are right around the nine hours. We have created this beautiful, wonderful gravy that is in our crock pot with our roast. It is looking so good, y'all. It's smelling so good. So we're gonna be checking it for tenderness and for doneness, okay? Wow, do you see that, y'all? Do you see how nice and tender our pot roast has cooked up in our crock pot? Oh my gosh, it is just really fork tender, and that is exactly what you wanna have happen. And you see our nice gravy right here. And I'm gonna give you a little uh, tip that I do, something I do, I'm gonna share with y'all uh, what I do with the gravy. Now it is perfect just like that, this wonderful gravy, but if you wanna kind of thicken it up just slightly, I'm gonna share with you what I do with that to make it just a little bit thicker. But just like this is perfect as well. And so we're gonna go in and scoop out our um, pot roast because I'm going to share with you how I just thicken up just slightly that gravy that we have right there. Now also when I was uh, talking before about uh, when to know to take your pot roast out we're also going to fish out our bay leaves as well and so but the garlic cloves that we put in there they've pretty much cooked and kind of just melted into the rest of the gravy for flavor but this is our wonderful pot roast that we have. But don't go nowhere because we are not done yet, y'all. So with our gravy, this is what we're going to do. I take two tablespoons of butter. You can use salted or unsalted butter. I turn my crock pot up to high and I go on and set it for about 30 minutes, but we're only going to be using it for about 10 or 15 minutes. I put the top back on and then to my butter, I melted the butter and I put two tablespoons of regular all-purpose flour. So that was two tablespoons of butter and then two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I melted, melted the butter, and then after the butter was melted, then I added the flour. You wanna mix all everything around. You wanna mix the butter and the flour, just really integrated both. You're gonna have just like a little slurry that you're gonna end up making with that butter and with the flour, just like I'm doing here. And this is what it's going to look like once you have your flour and your butter is integrated. It's gonna look like that. This is gonna be our thickening agent for our gravy, the gravy that we have created in our um, crock pot. And then I go on and I ladle in, I, I just go on and I uh, spoon in um, some of the gravy from our crock pot. I integrate that into our butter and flour mixture, just like I'm doing there. And just go on and mix it around just like that, kind of integrate those two together. And then after I do that, I just go on and I add that from my bowl into my crock pot. And then we're going to take that, once we have it all from the bowl into the crock pot, we're going to mix this around. Now this t entire step, optional, because the gravy is a nice, rich, delicious gravy, just like it is, but if you just want to um, make it a little bit thicker, this is what you would do to make it thicker. And so this is something that I've done for many years, and so I just wanted to kind of share that with you. And so again, my crock pot's on high. And we're going to put the top back on and we're going to let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. That's all it takes. Now, while that's going on, we've got our potatoes. They're nice and they're boiling. We also have our carrots. They're almost nice and tender. I'm going to add some nice peas to this as well. So I went on and added my peas. I drained off some of the water and I also added one tablespoon of butter. And so our, we're going to let our peas and carrots go on and cook. We're going to check on our gravy that we have and how it's thickened up some. 
Wow, I go in and I turn off my crock pot as well. So it's been about 10 minutes or so, about 10 or 12 minutes. And this is what it's looking like. And you see how it's thickened up? You see how it's just like, now it's just even thicker. It's nice and rich and it's just thickened up slightly. And it's just created this wonderful, beautiful, nice cascading gravy that we're gonna be using for our pot roast. And so next what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go on and just kind of shred or just kind of pull pieces apart, big chunks, small chunks. And you see how nice and tender it is. And I'm just gonna add the pot roast back into my crock pot. Also, how you can tell when your pot roast is ready is that you want it to be very, very tender when you um, stick your fork in it. You want it to be tender, not just done, but also tender. The tenderness is going to happen by cooking it that extended period of time of the eight hours or more. So at about maybe the seven hours or so, and possibly even six, your pot roast, your meat may be done. It may be done. However, it's not going to be as tender. And so to get the tenderness, you need to go on and make sure that you continue to cook it on low for eight hours or more. That is when that tenderness is going to come in. And what's going to happen also is that because you have that nice juice that it's stewing in and that nice, wonderful gravy that it's making for itself with its juices and everything, it's going to also keep your pot Hot roast from drying out okay and so you don't want to rush it you don't want to try to take it off if it looks like oh it looks like it's ready at six hours or seven hours but it's not going to be as tender if you let it cook longer and let it just stew in the crock pot on low for that eight hours or more that's when the tenderness is going to come in and so that's what i have found over the years of cooking pot roast um, in my crock pot that's been my experience and so i just want to kind of share it with you and so we um, added our pot roast right back into our crock pot now we're going to mash up our potatoes i put a couple of tablespoons of butter we already had put some salt in the water but we are definitely going to taste our potatoes once we have it mashed to adjust our seasoning as need be and so uh, with my potato masher i just like to use the butter and the potatoes only when i first begin mashing my potatoes i get them as creamy as possible and then i go in and i add in my liquid and the liquid that i'm using is i like to use half and half or either whole milk. Today I'm using half and half, and uh, usually one cup um, we usually do for about a pound and a half up to two pounds of potatoes when I'm mashing my potatoes. I um, first do just half of the cup, and then I put the second half of the cup in there. And then I just kind of smooth out the potatoes, moving everything around. Let's give it a taste test to see how it's tasting for seasoning and see if we need to make it smoother. The potatoes are tasting good. We just need a little, a little bit more salt. And I'm going to add just a little bit more, just one more pat of butter. We're going to go on and finish uh, blending our potatoes that we have. And then I'm going to go on and surface up a plate. And we are going to see how we did tonight for dinner. Well, I've served us up a plate of our wonderful mashed potatoes, our peas and carrots. I'm going to go on and top our potatoes with our wonderful pot rolls with that luscious, delicious gravy that it made. I'm just going to put it right there on top. Now, I'm putting mine on top of my mashed potatoes, but you can definitely put yours on the side of the plate. It is personal preference, whichever works best for you. And like I had mentioned before, you can also serve this over steamed rice. You can also do nice egg noodles. It's kind of like um, depending on what you want to uh, serve with it. This is our plate for dinner. I'm going to go on and get y'all a bite. You guys are going to have the first bite. This bite right here, oh my goodness, let me get the potatoes right there, y'all. That bite is for you. Go ahead and take your bite. I'm going to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Wow, you guys, this pot roast is so tender. It is so good. The mashed potatoes are so creamy. And for a bonus tip, if y'all have made it all the way to the end of this video, something that also works great when making this pot roast and then you're pulling apart, you're shredding apart the meat, is having sandwiches. You get yourself a hoagie roll or those nice sandwich rolls. You put the meat in there and it's got that gravy and stuff on the meat. And something else that I've used before is those King's Hawaiian rolls. You just split those open. Go on and put that meat in there, or that nice pot roast that we have with the gravy. Oh my gosh. And then you just take it and you put it on a platter. Wonderful appetizer. It feeds a crowd and it is great.
Well, I hope you give this recipe a try. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go on and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video and appreciate the content, don't forget to show it some love. Give it a thumbs up and click share and share this video with a friend or family. Well, that is it for me today, y'all. And remember, it's always good when Devon is cooking for the family. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.